When you're rolling through Beverly Hills, you'll find a little strip of land, the promised land. Rodeo Drive, where fashion dreams come true. A place where the rich and famous shop for only the highest in high fashion. Gucci, Prada, Chanel, Cartier, Ferragamo, and Vuitton. So if you must possess that darling Chanel purse, simply fall by in your Lamborghini with your platinum or better yet black card in hand and let it roll. But for the rest of us, if you seek, you shall find. Fire up that computer, search designer and resale and there it is. The Chanel you've been longing for. But wait, what's this? Instead of $3,000 retail price, you can grab it for 850 bucks? Score? Now that's a good deal, right? Price is the biggest indicator. If you're spending $20 on a luxury handbag or on a high-end watch, it's fake. Former NYPD Detective Sergeant and counterfeit investigator Bob Barkese has monitored the explosion of phony stuff. The kind of fakes you will find online will absolutely blow your mind, from phony cat food to bogus blood pressure pills. So it's ever popular is counterfeited. Electronic, footwear, pocketbook, watches, charging cord, phones themselves, pharmaceuticals. If you, you can, can make, make it, it, they'll, they'll fake it. it. But let's get back to high fashion for a minute. This designer dress, $1,500 retail. We got it for $250 bucks online. This $3,000 Chanel tote, we got it for a grand. And top it all off with $400 Chanel earrings. All in all, Crime Watch Daily spent over $1,600 to outfit me in all this. And all of it was bought on internet consignment stores and resale sites that guarantee all of this stuff would be real, authentic. But that's a lie because all of it is fake. We shopped at some of the online sites that are red hot right now. The Real Real did over $100 million of business last year. Tradesy is worth nearly 100 million bucks. Poshmark is valued at nearly $150 million. And the old warhorse eBay dwarfs them all with a value north of 60 billion. Now all of these companies operate differently. With eBay and Tradesy, it's up to you, the buyer, to prove if a product is a bust. If it's counterfeit, then you return it. At Poshmark, if the item you purchase is over $500, they'll authenticate it for you. If it's under 500 bucks, then it's up to you to make sure it's legit. At the real real, it's a bit different. They take possession of the item and verify its authenticity so you don't have to. So every item goes through a unique inspection process specific to that brand. We look at construction, materials, hardware, and the brand specific markings. The logos, date codes, or serial numbers. That's Graham Westberger. He and his peeps are responsible for making sure what they sell on the real real is just that. Almost 2,000 items a day land in the real real San Francisco office. We take everything in. We are inspecting every single piece and we retain possession of it until it sells. And you look at the authentic one right next to it. So. This is Faye Dial. She runs an internet resale site called Lollipuff.com, where things are done a different way. Lollipuff only accepts about a dozen brands for authentication and sale. For Faye, it's all about the details. In order to properly support and authenticate Chanel, you have to have authentication expertise in not only the vintage and the modern pieces, but also Chanel bags, Chanel clothing, Chanel jewelry, Chanel shoes, scarves. It goes on and on. And authentication expertise is very specific to the brand. So when you think about all of these brands that are out there, are they really, truly authenticating every single piece properly? I brought along that Hervé Leger dress, new with tags and all, that we bought from Couture 904 on eBay to see if it passed phase inspection. The made in China is in the wrong direction. The part number on the price tag is incorrect. There's a lot of things that are not good about this dress. The five quarters is incorrect. The serial number was sewn in incorrectly. This is in okay fake. Would you spot it in the street? Oh yeah, absolutely. Ooh, not good. And my authenticated $1,000 Chanel purse we bought from Tradesy? 
This is, again, a really, really poor fake. There are many, many obvious signs. When you look at this CC logo right here, it has a trademark. It has serifs on it. This is wrong. It should be more boxy. And the CC logo is a bit off as well. So pretty much everything about this bag is wrong. Okay, okay, I get it. We were suckered. But where does all this fraudulent stuff come from? In a word, China. Fakes come flooding into America, stuffed and hidden in container ships. An astounding 11,000 containers come through the port of Los Angeles every day. It's David Dodge's seemingly impossible task to determine what's what and block it so you don't get bamboozled. It ain't easy. It's incredible sometimes to see what they try to bring in. So here's one of them, here's right? One. Okay. Their products are so exact. The items themselves are exactly like the authentic. Even though they may say, we weren't trying to say it's a Chanel, but yes, you were. This yeah. is the clear indication. Right. The packaging, even the outer packaging, will be so close that sometimes we need help. This facility is over 260,000 square feet, and we have two others just like this. The 17-year customs vet offers a much darker view of this illegal epidemic, one you need to hear before you buy that counterfeit purse. They may be supporting organized crime. These criminal organizations are involved in counterfeits, but they can also be involved in human trafficking, uh, have slave labor at their factories, and they could be involved in narcotics and even terrorism. That's right. He said terrorism. So the victimless crime argument simply doesn't cut it anymore. No matter how good a job Dodge and Customs and Border Protection do, the reality is that lots and lots of counterfeit stuff finds its way to the streets. That's where Rick Ishitani and the LAPD Anti-Piracy Unit spring into action. Crime Watch Daily exclusively went along with Rick and a multi-agency task force on a raid in downtown Los Angeles. LAPD search warrant. Apparently, not everybody at this store got the memo about cooperating with men wearing badges, body armor, and carrying a warrant. Violet, listen, we're here conducting a search warrant, so we're conducting a criminal investigation. So you know what? If I were you, what I would do is I would answer the questions that are asked. Rick's team quickly finds what they're looking for in a back room. Fake Chanel, you name it, every but brand, uh, counterfeit jewelry is back there, and, and it's going to take some time to actually count every piece. But there's something more going on in here. They also uncover raw materials and molds. Looks like the counterfeiting crooks could manufacture their own mock merchandise right in the shop. The shady shop owner was cuffed and walked out. She could face up to 10 years behind bars, but I had a few questions on the way to the pokey. There's a little workshop back in there, so it seems as if you guys are already making a mess of Are you just selling fake stuff and you're wearing the real deal? So how can you avoid becoming a victim of counterfeit crime? Listen to the pros. You want to look for a site that specializes in specific brands. Make sure that the company is reputable, they have a good business, Better Business Bureau rating, that they have a customer service number in case you have any questions or you get something that you clearly didn't order. Look for listings with a lot of pictures. Generally, counterfeit sellers will list fewer pictures than somebody who's selling an authentic item. No stock photos. That's always a big, big sign on eBay or anywhere else. If you don't see pictures of the real thing, never place a bid. Just because they say authentic guaranteed, it doesn't mean that they've actually inspected the listing whatsoever. And if you do happen to get duped with a dud and you can't kick it back where it came from, Graham says please don't just try to sell it to someone else. Destroy it. Make a YouTube video out of it. Get some fun out of it. Take it to the shooting range or, or throw it in a campfire and uh, release it back to the fashion gods. 